So a little, a uh, few statistics about ransomware. As I said, uh, it is now the biggest cyber crime out there. If you want to think in terms of fraud, there is no better cyber attack that is fraud related than a ransomware attack um, because of the way that the attack is constructed, because of the way that it leverages usually an email communication that fools a person into clicking on a link or opening an attachment that loads the malware, the malicious software, that then installs the ransomware and locks down your computer. For those of you who have heard of ransomware but don't quite know how it works, basically what it does is it reaches into your computer and encrypts your drive. So all of your information is scrambled and can't be read unless you have a special key that decrypts it. And the attacker is the only person with that key. And unless you have a good backup, you are not going to get your data back. It's very difficult to decrypt if they use a very strong encryption. And you're probably not going to have the funds to pay someone to go through and decrypt it for you, even if it is possible. What are some of the things you can do? Well, I'd like to talk about three Three things in terms of what you can do um, in acting and not reacting to the problem, in getting ahead of the attackers. Technology, people, and process. Three things. Technology means that you have good cybersecurity. Cybersecurity that focuses, for example, on the endpoint. That piece of technology like your phone or your laptop or your server or um, thumb drives, those things that are closest to the human that is going to be fooled. And you leverage what's called zero trust. Zero trust is like having the best club in Hollywood. And in that club, no one's getting in past that big mean bouncer. It doesn't matter how good you look or how well healed you are, no one gets past. And uh, only those people who are on the list, only those programs, those executables that you want to run can run on your system, which is why you look at the endpoint. Because if it can't run there, it is not going to spread. That's how you stop malware and non-malware attacks, right? This technology. People. You have to have people who understand the technology. If you don't have people who understand how your technology works, who can conduct forensics, who have visibility and analytics into what's happening, it's all a waste of time. And finally, process. Process is about training people. It's learning not to click on links not to open attachments that come from people you don't know. But it's also learning that fraudsters are out there and that we have to be aware in order to stop them. Everybody here knows about the CEO attack, where every, you know, certain people in an organization get an email. It purportedly comes from the CEO, and it says, there's a crisis. You have to wire money to this account immediately, or everything will go wrong, and we're going to crash and burn and all lose our jobs. That pressure situation. And people will unfortunately do it. Um, we all know that you train people. When you get that email, if you think it might be legitimate, pick up the phone, remember those things, and call the CEO. It's OK to do that. CEO has to be cool with getting those calls. Might stop massive fraud. So that training is important. Technology, people, and process, that training.